Welcome team. I am so excited. Stephen Crichton, this has been a long time coming, brother. I think we've been talking about jumping on this potty for three years. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since the start. Yeah. yeah. You're high in demand. It's been hard to get you until we've finally locked you away in 2-7 Project in this nice setup. That uh, It's nice and local to you. They're doing some awesome things out here in the West which is an area you're so proud of. I want to go there with you. I want to go your big moments. Um, I want to go how you grew up. I want you to share little lessons along the way that may accelerate a career of a young a young kid that's watching yeah. now because, Stephen, I've seen it firsthand with you and I've loved, I've loved it when we've worked together. We had quite a few years together at the Penrith Panthers. We've had time together in Origin Camps and I love how much you inspire the next generation but I also know how much it means to you, especially – when you talk about kids from the area. Mm. Uh, I remember even when I first met you, before you were a rock star, you were doing things for kids yeah. in this area. So we definitely have to go there. The aim of this podcast, mate, is to help people, uh, teachers, coaches, trainers, players, leaders, business people, whoever, they just take little bits of wisdom from you. Even even though you're, you're quite young, you have, have a very mature head on your shoulders that I know in an unscripted chat, you'll deliver some gold here. Mm. I know it. So thanks Perfect. for your time. Perfect. Thanks for your time. I, to I really appreciate it, mate. So could you just – let's just start with growing up. Let's get to know you a little bit mm. for the listeners um, and then we'll, we'll get into the, the elite level stuff where you're at now. Yeah. Um, so uh, born overseas um, in Samoa, um, born there, um, stayed there for a year. A year and a bit, and uh, mom and dad had a um, decision to try and move to Australia. Um, so um, from Samoa, we moved to NZ, um, stayed there for a year and a bit again, and then um, yeah, they made the decision to come to Australia. Um, yeah, when we got to Australia, we didn't have a uh, didn't have a house, so we stayed with my other cousins, and they've got probably the same the same amount of siblings that we had. So there was like a lot of people in in one house where we first stayed at. Um, until um, dad got a job and um, older, my oldest brother had a job as well to uh, pro provide some cash so he can um, get our own place. And then, yeah, we moved into a um, three-bedroom house in uh, Rudy Hill and that's just where I've grown up ever since um, since we came to Australia. And, yeah, that's just that's, – that's been um, the start of awesome. where my life started, yeah. So – one year old baby when you left, somewhere, yeah, right? yeah, and then went to New Zealand for another year or two. Yeah, yeah. So for how old are you now? Twenty two. Yeah. So for twenty years of your life, yeah. you've lived, yeah, in in Rudy Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that that time where you went to move in with other family, how mm. long did that last? Um, for oh, I'm not sure. I think probably lasted for like three years until I started primary school. I, I, um, all I remember is we we did we stayed with them and then. When I started primary school, that's when we moved into our house down the road from Rudy Hill. Okay. Um, and that's where I started school, and that's where we had our like our own um, house and our own like kind of space. But it was still so cramped in there. With, yeah. Um, yeah, six siblings and um, yeah, my mom and dad in a three bedroom house. So it's pretty crazy. And you often had other people there as well. Once you moved with your own family, did you have yeah. other? Relatives stay with you or? Um, nah, no. or not not like. Um, not like the other house? Yeah, not not like every day, but yeah. like um, every time my auntie or someone came from Samoa, our house was the house to like, oh yeah, they have to stay in that room and we'd all get like go down to the sitting room and that would be where everyone sleeps um, while family members came over. So You must have great memories of those times. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, pretty crazy, yeah. It's a pretty special one. Um, Pretty special thing with us, some old families like that. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's where the culture and family first always comes from. Um, if um, one of the older relatives comes over, um, yeah, they get they'll go straight into uh, the main bedroom, and mum and dad would obviously sacrifice to stay in an, like in the sitting room and just just so they can have their own space. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of respect. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I I loved. I remember you told me once. I've never forgotten it that you slept on the lounge room floor, yeah, for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I probably didn't get my own bedroom till 
um, I was probably like SG Ball age, 17, 17, 18 when we moved from yeah. Rudy Hill to um, our house in Biddle. I um, yeah. didn't get my own bedroom till then. And that was when your older brother had moved out. Yeah, so. So you got his room. Yeah, so when my then. oldest brother moved out, then it's like a <coughs> ripple effect. So yeah. my second brother, third brother, um, Christian and New Year got their own bedroom and then my parents. Um, but ever since my sister got a little bit older, when she hit like 16, 17, she got her own bedroom. So um, yeah, I was still pushed to, pushed to the side of the sitting room a bit. And I, I really didn't, didn't mind it. Um, I knew that that was always the thing and I was always used to it. Um, so it wasn't like a burden on me that I was staying in the sitting room and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's good. So we'll fast forward a little bit. So now you live a life of you've bought your own home, you've bought family, the family home, yeah. you're, you're looking after family yeah. now, I believe. Um, you live a life <laughs> going from hotel to hotel, five star. <laughs> like do you ever reflect – I know you do, but maybe share it in your own words. Because I, I, I always see you as one of the most grateful people. But do you ever reflect back on you slept on the lounge room, yeah. living room floor for a long time. You didn't have your own bedroom until you were 17. Yeah. Do you ever look back on those times? Or Yeah, I, yeah, I always do. I think that's <coughs> where um, I always um, thank my parents a lot. I think it was a massive, massive decision for them to just pack up um, in the islands and move to... Um, New Zealand moved to Australia and like have nothing like just come and just um, just try and find somewhere somewhere to start and I think um, everything that I do now is just always always for my parents always for my family that um, that they can have um, something that they didn't have when we first came over um, so that was a massive reason behind buying a house like my parents never owned their own house they came here and um, they looked after all of us M my mum my mum especially looked after um, all of all six siblings while dad went to work just to make some money so uh, everything that I do now is for them and um, always be like truly grateful um, for the sacrifices that they had I know they would have went through dark times trying to trying to provide food for all of us siblings um, and I know it'll always be hard and but um, now with uh, what I've been blessed with uh, with the like the money that I get I always um, try and um, give as much as I can to them so I'll never have that burden of um, not having enough when back then they um, obviously provided for all of my siblings. So, um, yeah, truly right. grateful, man. Well done. Well done. I tell you, like, yeah. like you're 22 years old and you've bought your family's the yeah. home and you're looking like, is that ever a burden though? Or, or does that ever, do you ever feel pressure or you, it's, you, it's just in you that you yeah. love doing that? Nah, nah. Yeah, I think it's just um, <coughs> what makes me do it is those where I've where I've come from, where I've started. Um, I love that. Man. Yeah. So like, like you said, um, like staying in the living room. Like I want um, everything that my parents went through. I want like my kids. Like yeah. so they're like they don't have to go through it. Like I'm truly grateful for what I went through because they taught me a lot of lessons and um, definitely humbled me. So um, I don't get too ahead of myself from where I started to where I am now. Um, but yeah, there's no there's no pressure there with like I looking after that. my parents and um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be here without them. So the least I can do is provide for them and um, give away some, give them somewhere to stay and yeah, just yeah, it's good, man. I love that. I just wanted to hear that in case my kids are listening when yeah. when I get older, <laughs> you need to look after me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, of but, course. But um, I just love you're such a giving person, yeah. like. The, the stuff about the area too, like when I first met you, you were already doing stuff, mm. trying to just get down to a local park and help yeah. kids with their, whether it be their training or yeah. whatever it be. You're just always encouraging young kids in the area. Well, talk to me about that because that's that's pretty unique out yeah. here in Western Sydney. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. When it first started, um, it was like literally like a really small group like probably like six of us um, was me, my older brother and like my closest mates um, that were around my age group um, and we trained and then we started inviting a little bit of the older boys. They seen us training for the preseason and um, they came down and we were training and I think it was, I think it was Chris Scanlon. He's like, uh, it was someone that brought the idea to us. He's like, oh, why don't we just like post it and like see, see who comes like, 
So he comes down and trains and then we're like, oh, yeah, sweet, let's do it. And then we posted it and the next the next training we had, we had like 60 kids. <laughs> and we were so like, cool. oh, like, we, like, I don't know if we should have posted it because the drills that we were doing was like what we do at like oh, NRL yeah. preseason. Yeah, like we're yeah. doing like four minute runs. And, <laughs> and then I was like to my brother, oh, should we just like change this like, have some training? Fun. Yeah, because of like a lot of kids. And we're like, no, nah, just like do it. Like, And a lot of those kids just came and we did the four minute run and we were telling them like it could be hard but you guys just do what you can. And I was like so surprised. A lot of kids like kept doing the four minute run and just didn't stop and just kept running. Um, but yeah, that's kind of kind of where it all started. And um, then we just kept doing it thinking when we were younger, we didn't we didn't have like um, NRL players like doing that type of stuff. And we knew there was a massive influence on the kids, like seeing myself, my older brother, um, got like Bizarre, Romy and that to come down and um, like Spencer, most of the Penrith boys, we had um, Moses and that come down and train with us. And you see those kids that are um, looking up to become an NRL player, um, the front rowers that are training and they see Moses do the four minute run and he's like fit. And it was like surprising me that like those kids were like, far, I want to be like like that guy. And yeah. I think, and that's what, that's what kept pushing us to keep doing it. Um, those, um, co those kids that come and just uh, see us on TV, but um, we're not like superstars to them. We're like we're like their mates, and they can come up and ask questions when we're training and all things like that, just to help them out. So yeah, it's pretty um, crazy seeing even the uh, when last year all of our grades won the grand final. Yeah, um, you see like the pictures and that, and like I, I spotted so many kids that came to our FTA training, and um, it's pretty crazy. Don't want to like take the credit of um, doing the off season and they all come into our off season training, but yeah. it's like good to get them started the off season and good that they had a good year and won the grand final too. So it's crazy, man. That's so good. Yeah. And you're also very giving to the church. You always mm. talk to me about your faith. Yeah. Uh, faith is a massive thing. I think um, that was a massive thing of how, where I am now. Um, it's a testament to my parents and they pray every day, every night, um, even um, a few Few, uh, every Saturday morning, my parents go to the mountain in um, in um, it's like uh, it's in like Fairfield. Um, yeah, there's like a mountain there, and they go and pray. And um, sometimes when I don't have a game, they try and like take me to go there and um, pray. So that definitely keeps me keeps me humbled. And um, remember that everything that I get, it's like it's not a mistake. It's it's from God, and God has um, blessed me with this. And um, yeah, it definitely keeps me in line. So. Yeah, because yeah, I might go somewhere with you that may interest some people that could be digging deep into their own personal vision in their life and, <clears throat> and what may happen, what what's yeah. possible when mm. you're aiming really high. We did that mean you once. We went through a little exercise about what could be possible for you mm. and yeah. and what could get in the way of yeah. that happening and you went through all that and we, you know, there's a series of things that we don't really have time to talk about now, but there's a, there was an, an exercise we went through yeah. developing your own philosophy and yeah. your own vision. But I do remember, I do remember in and amongst that, I asked you, what will happen? What will you do if something goes wrong? So let's say in your, in your world, mm. things that could go wrong could be injury or yeah. what, what would you do? And I, I never forget it. You, you actually wrote down in this little book, or it might have been on my whiteboard at the time. Yeah. You actually wrote "Return to my faith yeah. if ever anything goes wrong." Yeah. That was that was pretty powerful. Yeah. For, even for me to listen to, I, I was listening to you like you were nineteen years old, yeah. or twenty years old when we did this, and and it was powerful, man. Yeah, yeah. And then we also come up with a little yeah philosophy, philosophy yeah. like in some words. And I always remember yours. It was without fear. Yeah. Where did that come from? What influenced you? to a point where you knew that every day if you could live without fear, that means no fear of other people's opinions, yeah. no fear of people judging you, yeah. being really courageous with your actions, no fear on the field, off the field, how you live, how you provide. How, like without fear was just you. It wasn't just on the footy field. Yeah. Talk to me where that. I think it was from a scripture from the yeah, Bible, right? It was, yeah, yeah, it was from uh, scripture from the Bible. It's um, Psalms one one eight um, six. 
Um, it says, um, I, will, I will not fear what can man do to me. Uh, but all of that came from, um, it was my oldest brother, they gave me the verse. I was like, uh, I was like reading, because I read my Bible every every game day. And he came over and he was like, because uh, sometimes I just, I sit there, like looking at the Bible, I don't know what to read. So yeah. I was like, I was sitting there one time and he walked in, he's like, oh, what are you reading? I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm just trying to find something that will like help me for the game. And then he, he just dropped that verse, like he just dropped it on me. He's like, oh, I'll read that. And then he like left. And I just read into it and um, it just made me like reflect on the game and um, away from footy um, about like fearing fearing injury. Like if I do if I do get injured, it's not the end of the world because I'm not just an NRL player. Um, I've got a family there. I've got um, other things that I can look at, um, at doing if footy doesn't work out. And that was where like do not fear came and just my mindset going into games like um, like not fearing the opponent like they're – um, what what we can, what I can like, my potential can actually do if I'm not if I'm not scared if I'm not like fearing um, the other team and that's probably where it came from um, and when we sat down that time that's where um, I told you that verse and I still live by it every day with everything um, you know you could be scared about your next decision what you what you do but if you just do it without fearing like you do it wholeheartedly it's just like oh yeah, whatever happens then it happens I love it yeah. I love it. Even coming in here, there's no fear of these cameras and no fear yeah, of spending exactly. time with me. Thanks for that. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, that was powerful, man. But what you just said there was an influence of your brother. He's been a big influence. Could I go there with – because part of that exercise, developing your own mm. unique, authentic philosophy for you was go through all your influences in your life. Who were some of the others? I remember the brother clearly. Was there other – was there any sport people that influenced you or any lessons you learned along the way that really stick out or idols you had or coaches, teachers? Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't know. I think the biggest idols I have are my older brothers. Um, yeah. They were like, they probably weren't as fortunate as me and Christian, my two oldest brothers. Because um, when we first came, when we first came from New Zealand, um, they weren't allowed to play sports. Like they weren't allowed to do anything. Um, it was just church, church, church. Like my my parents like um, told them they're not allowed to do anything on the weekend. You have to go to church and that's it. Like that's all. But they were very like talented at um, sports as well. They were probably more talented than me and Christian. And it wasn't until Christian hit the age of 18 and a coach like watched him play and said, oh, he's got potential to play footy. And my parents like, oh, no, nah, we would rather put him in church and play in the band. Um, then play footy and um, then yeah something about um, something changed my parents mind and just let him like go into sports and then yeah he ended up getting a career out of it and I was probably like the next in line like coming through and uh, my parents were just like I was like at the age of 15 and my brothers my older brothers have never played sport until like they still don't play sport just because my parents like didn't let them um, yeah then it wasn't until the age of 15 and my parents like let me play and yeah so um, my older, my old, my two older brother probably weren't as fortunate as uh, me and Christian. And I think that's the blessings um, that my parents prayed for. Um, they prayed like they would get a career after it, and well, that's um, all part yeah. of an uh, amazing yeah, so, journey. Yeah. So, well, let's go to your junior sport then. You you played multiple sports. I'm mm. a huge believer, a huge believer in just let kids play, mm. let kids play yeah. multiple sports. You are the poster boy of that, brother. I remember. Like there was – I, I want to hear from you all the sports yeah. you played, but I've seen you play like we might muck around with AFL. Mm. You look like you could play AFL. We, yeah. we play soccer. We play basketball. Your basketball is next level. <laughs> so um, if any coaches and trainers or parents out there are listening, I'd love to hear your your junior years, your real, the real big years mm. for, a, for a child's athletic development is the multiple sports yeah. you play. Talk to us about that. Yeah, uh, I played like whatever whatever sport I could get into. I, I just jumped into it. I, um, my parents weren't really like strict about a sport. Uh, my dad would always, um, ever since Christian played um, footy and was good at it, my dad was always leaning towards footy. Um, but when I was younger, um, like Peter would say, like summer sport, whatever sport was there, I just tick it, let's go play. And I was like, I loved every single sport of it. And uh, when it hit like uh, year seven, year eight, year nine, um, 
I, I really got into AFL in year seven, year eight, um, like playing. Um, I got into like the Giants and stuff, like the Junior Giants. So I was playing there and my mum loved loved AFL more than footy because like AFL you don't tackle as hard. Um, yeah. So she was like more thinking like my safety and that and my dad was like, nah, he'll, he'll grow up and get used to it. So my mum was always leaning to footy and um, then got a bit older and we would always play basketball on the weekends with the boys. So yeah. um, I started to learn how to play basketball. Um, but yeah, then the, probably the hardest was year 10, 11 and 12 coming to um, like um, like senior senior school. And um, I had I had basketball there. Um, I had basketball, AFL and um, rugby yeah. league. Yeah. Um, and my parents were like, not not arguing, but like saying like, oh, no, nah, he should try this. Like he should play AFL and try and succeed at AFL. And then my dad was like, oh, no, nah, he should um, he should go and play rugby league. Um, cause, and your brother was saying, his older brother put was him like, in the NBA tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. And then um, and I was like, oh, I already like, I already knew I, I didn't want to like play AFL. I just like yeah. pushed that to the side. But I was like, oh, I want to just go all out at basketball and, and footy. Yeah. So then uh, 11 and 12 uh, in school, I just like pumped out basketball heaps, like played basketball and made, made finals and that for basketball. And I was playing basketball and footy like on um, – like on our sport days, yeah. Um, so we versed schools and played basketball. And then the next day we'll have a GIO game, yeah. and then on the weekend we'll have a Penrith game. So I was just getting like pumped, but I actually like I loved it. Eh? And um, our coach at Benny Harden was yeah. like worried that like I was playing too much, like playing too much sports. And um, yeah, then I had a um, decision to make out of um, basketball and footy. Um, um, my basketball coach was like telling me that. I could um, get a scholarship for basketball um, to play Australia school boys for basketball. And, and I was actually tossing up like to go and play. And, and then um, our GIO, um, the Australia school boys team came out and I was in the rugby league Australia school boys team. So, and that was going to tour to England. Yeah. And that was the same time the basketball tour was going to go like um, for me, if I was going to go and play. And I sat down with my parents and um, <laughs> I was like, Oh, I got like, a decision to make either to go to the basketball tour and try and um, make something about it or go and um, play footy for Australia school boys and my dad just got up and said oh you're going to the Australia school boys rugby league and then just walked and, said, and okay, I, was like, dad. <laughs> I was like oh <laughs> yeah, yeah sweet then and then that was kind of like the decision after that yeah. um when school boys and then just went full out on uh, rugby league and just play basketball uh, where I can and because as, as you know, when we work together, I, I still encourage it. Like yeah. one of the best things we did was let's go and buy a ring and yeah. put it in the gym and play. Like I love, yeah. like we used to do a lot of our jumping type yeah. activity in and around basketball. And I watched how that grew authentically with you boys. Yeah. Uh, to a point now I even had a junior a junior team the other week where I got them together just to go play basketball yeah. and they're a rugby league team. Yeah. I got them together to play basketball yeah. and that's a bit of the influence of knowing how athletic you are. Mm. Were you playing like Division Two rugby league like back in the 13s, 14s? What was happening? Which was your club team? Um, I started like right at the start. I started at Minchinbury. Like yeah. I tell the boys but they're like, oh, no, you're, like, you're talking crap and that. Yeah. My first ever like season, I didn't I didn't play a game that year. Yeah. I, was, I was that bad. I played I played at Minchinbury and it was like div div four, div almost, four, yeah, almost div five. Yeah, like, that's how like pretty bad our team was that we couldn't get a team together. So, and then um, I was just like like mucking around a lot. Like I didn't yeah. like take footy serious. Like I wasn't I didn't think I was good at it either. Yeah, I was just like a tall stick and a tall and I went stick. to um, St Mary's. My parents moved me to St Mary's because my brother was there. Yeah. And then I was playing um, Div um, Div 3, Div 2 there. Yeah. And um, my brother was like, oh, we should, like, you should actually try and make the Division 1 team, like, right. as a goal. And I was like, oh, yeah, sweet then. And he was doing Penrith preseason. Yeah. So in the preseason, he'll go do preseason and come back and train me in the, in the afternoons. Yeah. Um, and then that's when I started to, like, learn, like, learn the game properly and, and play. Um, but, yeah, I was still, like, Div 2, Div 2, Div 3. And couldn't make the Division One team, and then um, a few of a few of the boys like left, and then I, I got some new mates at school, and most of them, they all um, a few of my like white boy uh, white boy mates moved to St Clair Comets, and 
I was like, oh yeah, I can't I can't make div div one at St Mary's, so I'll, I'll just move to St Clair and like try my best. And then I moved there, and then yeah, just got selected for div one there and just started playing with playing with those boys. And we ended up making the grand final and losing to Minchinbury. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where it all started. So pretty crazy from uh, where I first started to like where I end up now, and it's a massive. Massive story I try and tell kids these days. I see them get sad and, um, like, upset that they don't make, like, Harry Matthews, like, um, like the train-on squad for under-15s and that. Like, I never – I didn't even know about those squads when I was that young. Like, I didn't, I didn't make those Harry Mats until, like, my um, my age for SG War. That's when I got caught up to Penrith. And even, even that time I still almost missed my opportunity for that as well. Because <laughs> – there was an AFL trial that day, nah. I think, was it? Oh no, nah, it wasn't no, an nothing. AFL trial. Yeah, I, I was like, um, so I didn't have I didn't have social media, and they put up the Penrith uh, SG Ball team on on the um, on Facebook, and yeah. I didn't. Uh, my parents then didn't have Facebook. Like I didn't have social media. It was only Christian that knew. Yeah. So the first week went by SG Ball preseason. And you and didn't I didn't turn go. up. No, I didn't. I didn't turn <laughs> up, and then. Uh, my brother's like coming home. He's like, "Well, why didn't why aren't you going to the Penrith training? You got picked." And I, I, I didn't even know. You didn't know. Yeah. So then. Well, like, there's a lot of things have changed because now you are um, pretty big on social media, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of it, yeah. a lot of things have changed. Uh, mate, what a crazy story! And I'm so glad you shared that because I've told kids, mm. kids that feel it's the end of the world if they don't make a team yeah. at 15 or 14 or. And I, I tell the Steve Crichton story mm. and I think they don't believe me. Yeah. Like even my own son, who you know, Owie, he, yeah, he oh, loves yeah. you, man. Like he, he's um, spent some really good times with you and he just sees you as this yeah. superstar. And I, he's heard me tell other kids, mm. Steve Crichton, you know, he was playing Division yeah. 2. I didn't know Division 4. Yeah. And he'll grab me later and say, nah, that's not possible, Dad. No. Like, so, yeah. But it really is, really is. And so it kind of brings me now then to I was in an Origin camp. Were you playing Origin 20s one year? Did you yep. play 20s? Yeah, yep. 20s, yeah. Danny Badiris went down to watch the 20s mm. and he came back. Bedsy knew I was at Penrith and he said, mate, there's a kid from Penrith. Mm. If you teach him how to train and be a pro, yeah. Oh my God, the world is at his feet. This was Bedsy saying, yeah. but he said you need to teach yeah. him how to work hard. You yeah. Know? Um, so then you came out. I, so that was ringing in my head the first day I saw you. So the yeah. first day at Penrith, I don't know if you remember, I come straight, like made a beeline to you. We did some running or whatever, and yeah. I come straight to you, and you're my project brother. Um, and then I, I saw some things happen. I mean, go back to that four-minute run that you took all the kids through. I saw some things in you that were like – I kind of had this impression when he said you need to teach him how to work hard, I kind of thought, oh, there's going to be this kid that doesn't work hard. Yeah. That's not true. Mm. Like there was a level of toughness in you that now I understand how you grew up and how you lived and and how you worked hard and your family's influence. There's a – even now you're telling me how your brother used to go and train mm. you and there was something I saw when you trained that, hey, there's there's something special here. Like you were – back then I'd had centres in the game that were like usually not that fit. They were yeah. – well, everyone's fit to play that game yeah. but the least fit was usually the real fast, twitch, powerful athlete that's not really good for the hard work, mm. the endurance and they would often find themselves – Center, yeah, maybe wing, but then you kind of planted this seed in me. Like we could change, change a few things how centers play if they're fitter. Yeah, and we were like, we want fit centers. We yeah. want fit centers. And the beauty was too, like you also like fullback. So mm. if you want to be a fullback, you have to be the fittest yeah, in the exactly, team. Yeah. So we were like, well, let's train him like a fullback, mm. fitness wise. And and then all of a sudden we will have the fittest center in the yeah. game. So, but yeah, I saw some things where you embraced hard work. Like you, it looked like you loved hard work. Like I've never seen you shy away from hard work, but now I understand of your background and your history. It explains it. But I have so many good memories of, of you. I don't know what your memories were when you came in. What was it like when you hit an NRL preseason? What, what, 
what was it like for for a kid who grew up like you did um yeah i didn't hit oh my first nrl preseason. um i already played five games of grade i missed i missed my first nrl preseason um because of the australia school boys um, yeah i came back and then um, benny Harden told me to um, have a break and i went to samoa and seen my grandma and seen my family and then came back and then that's when um i was still playing cup and then got pushed up but when I first came to NRL preseason, um, I just wanted to like learn as much as I could, and um, yeah, we, we always like spoke about like, oh, we, you want to if you want to be the best, like you got to beat the best, yeah. and like the fittest ever since I started was, has always been Dill, and like even like um, some sessions where I didn't I didn't train, I just watched Dill, like he wasn't he wasn't the best at skills, he wasn't the best at that, but he was like so good at running like he was so like he'll just outrun everyone um yeah. every time and um yeah that's that's kind of what i watched and um i knew that um i had a bit of skills but what, what was like i was pretty bad i was like fitness but i knew that i could like work hard and i think ever since like meeting you and um learning how to become a fit center and doing the right things like it's gotten to me where i am now so yeah. Yo, shout out to H, shout out to H. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, so many good memories. Well, let's go to the debut then. Like yeah. for me, for me that debut, I always remember debuts because you know why? I love kids that make a debut because it tells me that somewhere in their life they wanted it more than someone else. Yeah. Like it, it, it is to this day and I, I've worked – in professional sport for like 25 years yeah. and and the highlight of me i mean there's other highlights like championships i've seen you guys play rep footy or whatever but but debuts are special yeah. man. debuts are special because there's always a story behind it mm. and you usually learn that person's story as well and a family might come in and give you a jersey yeah. or whatever it's just really special your debut against the sharks in 2019 yeah, yeah. It was a pretty special night because there was Spencer mm. debuted and there was uh, Birdo debuted. Yeah. Tell me about getting told about your debut and your memories of that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, getting told. Um, it was like midweek and the team, um, I don't think the team was going too good as well at the time. So I was like, I was playing cup and um, yeah, I was just in the kitchen like eating, eating toast. Um, like always. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was eating toast and Ivan walks in and he goes, oh, like, what are you doing on the weekend? And I go, oh, no, nothing. Just watch the boys play. He goes, oh, like, do you want to play? Like asking. And I was like, oh, what kind of, like, what kind of questions that? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to answer it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. And he goes like, oh, are you available? Like, are you available that, that night? And I was like, oh yeah, I think so. And he goes, all right, uh, well, like I'm going to debut that week, uh, that, that night. And, um, make sure you don't tell anyone. Um, and then like the whole week, I had to keep it a secret the whole week. And um, I called my parents straight away. Um, they were obviously uh, really emotional. I called my partner at the time as well. And um, yeah, they were like just so emotional and um, told my family. But yeah, we had to keep it um, under wraps. And um, yeah, the Sharks team didn't end up finding out until I ran out um, that I was debuting. So um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Was that against Cronulla? Yeah, Sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I we even, um, it was cold. We yeah, had those, it was cold, they, yeah. We had that because I remember the staff, we had those grey Mark Hughes Foundation beanies. Yeah, up. beanies, yeah. Yeah, because I have some photos of us after the game. Yeah, that was a night. Yeah. Okay, and then 2020, we're playing yeah. round one. Round one. Which a lot of people think of this as your debut. Yeah played against the roosters were back-to-back -back premiers mm. and you come on the field off the bench can you talk me is that the world's qu quickest try off the bench i'm not sure we should check the stats man yeah i don't know i don't, don't know. know well could you tell me your memory yeah of that because everyone remembers that yeah so um yeah i was on the bench obviously and um i was just sitting there waiting and then we hit like the 20 minute 20 minutes left mark actually pause tuesday do we have this video Oh, Oi. Oi. <laughs> two seven, two seven. So you just come on the field. Talk me through this. Yeah, no, I was on the bench and um, I heard Ivan through the walkie-talkie like, "Oh, get critter ready. He's going on now. Um, we just got the ball back." Um, so I was waiting on the side there and 
um, the boys on the bench is like, oh, go out there, like, just do your best, like, go out there, go hard, you've got 20 minutes left. So I ran out there and I sprinted straight, like, straight through the middle because the boys were um, doing a play already. Um, and then, yeah, that was part of, by the time NATO had the ball, passing it to Source, and I was like, oh, I'm fresh right now, so I just sprint for the try line. So I sprinted straight up the middle and, yeah, Source, um, Source see me and he just kicked it back in. I uh, got the ball, perfect bounce and um, scored and some of the boys didn't even know that I was I was on the field yet until we started celebrating. What what um, was on the what was on the wrist? My wrist. Oh yeah, pointed said, straight um, to the wrist. Yeah, it said Jesus on it. Um I think um I've learned a lot um about giving back and who I represent on the field and um one one moment like that where kids kids will always watch this and I would always get that question or oh, why, why do you always point at your wrist and yeah, it's because it says um, Jesus and that's um, who I play for and um, that's the reason why I'm out there. So, yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, my memory of this was that's me there in the background. Oy. <laughs> so my memory of this was Ivan on the radio, get yeah. critter ready, go yeah. get like make the sub. And then if you watch this, I'm so excited. Have a look. <laughs> My you job, knew it was I, happening. I meant to get back off the field, yeah. but I knew what was happening and I was like, this is best seat in the house. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah. So, so, so I stop to watch and I saw you and, oh, mate, I was <laughs> so happy for you, mate. That was such a moment. Yeah. The source. Crazy, look man. at him. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, we had some great memories. Uh, your debut was one. That was one. Had some. Great, that was a great year, twenty twenty, mm. and we ended up learning some lessons. Though grand final yeah. loss, that was painful, mate. Yeah. That was, it's very hard to explain the pain mm. of a loss of a grand final. But the next year, so many great moments. There's some moments that I miss of you, and I want to go here because people in any industry, they need people with energy mm. in their team. Energy is contagious, either positive or negative. Yeah. Within, let's picture a workforce, let's picture a classroom, let's picture uh, any sporting team, yeah. any families. Like energy is contagious, mm. right? I really miss that about you, man. I haven't spent that time with you for a while now. I see you even when you walk in the door here today. This energy I get when I see you. It, and there's all these memories, right? Yeah. So I'm going to bring a couple up that only I filmed. <laughs> Only I have this. Yeah, done, done. Let's go. Let's go. Mate, those were like <laughs> – we had this thing that year that whoever handles it the best will win. You had to handle a lot that, that yeah. year, everyone moving, moving families, people making sacrifices. Some people had families mm. there, some people didn't. You're talking from staff to player to everyone. It mm. was such a hectic time yeah, and we all moved. Yeah. Ends up a real special time though. Yeah, of course. Um, but it didn't matter how you feel – doesn't matter if you haven't slept well. Doesn't matter if you're not feeling well. Doesn't matter if there's stress going on in your life. It, it doesn't matter how you feel. Your job is to bring that energy and yeah. you bring it. You bring it. Like those times, like what, what memories does that bring back for you? Like those, those were before training, let yeah. alone what you bring when we are training and after training. Yeah. That was like, what's your memories of that? Oh, and oh. do you see that as a responsibility? To bring that yeah. or that's just natural? I think, um, oh, just for that question, I think that's just natural. I think um, everything that I do, like whether I'm with someone, like like you said, energy is con contagious and um, I want to leave someone knowing that they had fun, like they, um, that I have that um, like connection with someone, you know what I mean? Um, so like when it came, like when it comes to like training and stuff, that's just how it normally is. Like that's the, ever since... I've never been to another like I've never been to another club. I haven't sensed what other clubs are like. Ever since I've come into the NRL, um, our team has always been so young, filled with energy like that. So that's kind of all that I'm used to, 
and that's still the same how it is right now at training so it's not like a responsibility it's not something that you can just like turn on like because when yeah. you try and turn it on it's like too fake like it's like yes, yes it's not yes. real real energy and you can sense yeah. that like oh you're just doing it for like you're just doing it for fun like you're yeah. doing it for the camera you know um but uh, those times were always always the best times you know like uh, those were the best up, yeah there was no cameras there except yeah, my exactly. phone <laughs> yeah so uh, like those are the best moving moving away away from our families like it ended up being so special by the end of it but uh, me and my missus always always talk about um sunshine coast like oh if only we could relive that moment you know like when we moved there um everyone was like didn't know what was going on but like you said whoever handled it the most like the best we had our team there and our bubble like that's that's all that mattered and yeah. that's like the boys never complained that time you know like um the boys never complained when we went to training we focused on training after training then you can muck around you know like muck around as much as you want but um i actually learned a lot of my um like my immatureness from Bizar. Um he's yeah. like he's like the main one, you know. I think he's the the type of person he is. Um I've learned so much from him about like not taking like so many things so serious, you know. Um I think even it still makes me laugh like before games. I try and talk to him serious and like he's cracking jokes to me like and it just um shows how much like he lives in the moment, you know. He always tells me like, "Oh, why are you so serious for like like um, chill out, like have fun. This is what it's all about. Like when you were young, you always wanted to play in a role. We're here. Like you're with your best mates. Like have fun. Like that's all. That's yeah. all you can do. And whatever happens after that, like we can work with it. But if you're having fun while you're doing it, you're never gonna forget these memories. And that's something that Biz has always taught me. Going into training, he's always mucking around. Serious moment, he's always mucking around. Like he's just always like having fun. And like people see that about him. On social media the way he acts and um, yeah. the way he is about like with the fans and that like yeah that's what that's something i really love about bizzle man so he always talks he even just recently uh in the origin camp we talked about still just don't lose that nine-year-old yeah, yeah you know? like, exactly, he loves yeah. that he yeah. loves that uh, so that was leading into this grand final moment mm. let's have a look at this grand final moment we should have the the try there, um, we talk about without fear. Mm. I mean, there's a lot in this try. There was the yeah. systems that you followed. There was the reps you've done with, you know, Cam Serrato, the yeah. defensive coach. Um, there was a lot of detail in this try, but there was also a lot of critter without fear. Like, yeah. like you couldn't fear not making the play here. Yeah. You just had to follow your gut. Yeah. Could, but I'd love to hear it from you. There's more detail in this than anyone knows. It's, yeah. It was not lucky, but yeah. uh, let's let's hear it. Tuesday, do you have that try against South? Talk us through that, mate. Um, yeah. So many people like always like talk about that moment, but. Um, you you and like you see what happens behind the scenes um, with preparations and with training and um, Ciro got like, this video he made this video about this that that one play um, it happened at training and I was in that same position and they threw the long ball and I went to pick it and I missed it and like I was so down about myself and it was a bit earlier on that that year at training, um, I kept getting into that position and missing the play. Like it's either they hit my inside or hit my outside. So I just um, done so many reps about it, and like funny enough, that same like that same picture that I kept kept getting wrong at training came in the biggest game, like the biggest game. And me and Ciro always like talk about it. Like this is what happens when you do your homework. Like yeah, um, yeah like I missed I missed that play so many times, but. Um, yeah, just with all the homework that I've done, like on the yeah. biggest stage, like I was in the right spot to uh, make the right play. And um, yeah, I was always, I, I, every time I watch it, I, I never think about myself. I think about um, the coaching, like the coaches that um, sat me down throughout the whole year, like yeah. talking to me, like, no, you, like you're too far forward. No, you're too far to the right. You're too far to the left. You got to get to that that right position. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, with all those reps, yeah, ended up, getting to the right position on the biggest on game the biggest of my life game. and um, picking the right pass and um, yeah, just still, every time I talk to 
um, Sarah about that try, I always give him like all the credit because uh, without him sitting me down every week, every time I missed that play, um, I wouldn't have been able to do it on the biggest stage. So, yeah, it's crazy, man. Well, it pays you back too that yeah. I work with uh, with Ciro because mm. now he's paying you a million bucks a year to go to the <laughs> Bulldogs. <laughs> no, it all works no. out. Um, but, yeah, that, uh, that's a great story. There's definitely no fear in that. Then, then mm. I mean, some other magic moments you've had where you've just backed yourself, like getting Samoa into the World Cup final. I'll never forget that. I was, yeah. I was in a pub with my son in England. I'll come to visit and watch you play yeah. and stuff. And we'd watch the Aussies the night before, but we couldn't get down to London to watch Samoa v England. So I just say, come on, son, we need to get to this pub. We need yeah. to find somewhere that's got the game. Yeah. And we're sitting there. And he got, he actually oh he says to me, Critter's going to intercept. Critter's going to intercept. And then you intercept to score. Yeah. It's a very similar moment. Mm. Then a, the game's tied, and I think Samoa had already had a crack at field goal. And yeah. Owen's going, they just got to give it to Critter. You've seen him kick field goals. Got to give it to Critter. And next, the mate, it was like he was a genius commentator. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing, they you kick this field goal to get your country into the World Cup final unheard of nobody would tip Samoa to yeah. make the World Cup final what was that like um yeah it was crazy um I think coming off the grand final and then um, we were only home for like five days and then we had to leave straight away to England so um yeah we got there jet lag like straight to training like did, did our training and stuff and um like we didn't we didn't prepare well that first week just because like um us grand final boys like got there and um, the team was like a bit like all over the shop with um, training and things like that. So we didn't we didn't prepare the best we could to like put our best foot forward for the first England game, and it showed by the scoreboard. And I think all the boys just sat down and like, oh, like if we really want to have a crack at this, like let's like dial in and do whatever we can to um, to make it like make it as far as we can, as best as we can. So yeah, we sat down. The boys um, spoke about it, and um, yeah, then after that, the boys just like really went after it um just did whatever they could like um just like fight fight as hard as you can um for the country and we what motivated the boys the most was after each win we seen um the parades we seen um, videos of our fans on roads on cars on houses uh, just rooting for us and um that really did motivate the boys and really got them keen to just keep getting better and keep getting further and the further we got um like we just knew that our our country and our people were right behind us the whole way. So it was like really special, yeah. You've had some incredible moments and you're still only 22. There's there's more than 10 years of this left. This is crazy to think. So Hopefully, hopefully God willing. Could we do part two in 10 years' time, <laughs> part two of this episode podcast because there's another whole journey ahead. Origin, state of origin. Uh, again, another time I was really privileged to be a part of your career. It's something that I'm personally grateful for, but also saying, hey, Critter, get up, get ready, mm. you're going on, because you yeah. came on off the bench yeah. in Origin for your first debut, and you've had some special moments in there. You've experienced winning Origin Series with your best mates. Mm. Talk to me about that and refer back to the area again. Yeah. Like it's, I don't think anyone, if you said 10 years ago, there's going to be a group of best mates mm. from this area out here in Western Sydney yeah. are going to, going to play together at State of Origin. What What is that like? Yeah, it's crazy. Like like you say, from where we first started to like where like where we are now, I think um, even this, this year's um, game three was like really special. Um, Freddie and um, Fox came up with the idea to get our – um, area like where we were from on our on our chest arm yeah. on the jersey so um yeah it was good to um see the game game line up and you see like Mount Druitt, Rudy Hill, Biddle, Whalen um and the boys are proud of that you know um coming from um uh, from Mount Druitt, um not as fortunate and um a lot of kids um that have the potential but now we are the living like um like we are the proof that they can make it as well and to the biggest stage as well, um, state of origin. So uh, that's always what it's been about, um, making a pathway for the kids that um, to make the right choices so they can provide for their family as well. And it's not like it's not too far ahead. Like it's not it's not that far 
um, when I was young, looking at State of Origin, I was like, oh, I'd, I'd never, never play there. Like that's that's like with the best players. Um, but now, with hard work and um, being humble and like putting your family first and things that really matter to you, um, putting the right people around you, around uh, around your headspace, and that will definitely get you to the right place, and you can go as far as you want. That's so good, man. I, I might, if I could, just for one or two minutes and we'll finish, talk to me about the best leaders you have played with. So I want to know, if I just throw the word Nathan Cleary at you, yeah. what do you think of him as a leader? Why he's so good? No, nah, he's like, he's the most professional player I've ever I've ever worked with, I've ever, I've ever seen. I've been a part of a lot of teams, but no one would ever beat the work rate, the, like the extras that um, Nathan puts in. Um, even with his um, goal kicking, he goal kicks like after every session. Like he's he's a, he's always the last one on the field, um, and like that's always been said about Nathan. Like oh yeah, he's the last one. Like yeah, what's like what's the big deal? But you look at the biggest games, all of his field goals this year. Like he does that after training when he's tired, and uh, people might think it's a fluke, but he does it after training before Captain John. And I think that's the. Um, that's always someone that I've, I've looked up to and the reason why I do a lot of my extras and things like that is on the biggest game like you're going to need what you like what you're going to fall back on is your training and if you haven't done it at training it's not going to come out on the biggest um, biggest stage so um, I've seen Klez do it at training multiple times and when the game's on the line and you're throwing the ball to Klez you know you know that he's he's done the work and uh, I'll back him every every day of the week to get the job done so Awesome. If I mention Isaiah Yo as yeah. a captain, what yeah. comes to mind? Um, mature um, leadership, like you say. I think when we play, when we play, he's always the first voice. Like he's always the voice that the boys look to. Um, if we're a bit out of order with our shapes and things, we look at Klez and we look at Yoey because Yoey locks up our, our middle a lot, and he he is the um, like he is our captain and. He's the most mature. I think in meetings he he talks the most as well, and uh, when he talks, the whole room just goes quiet and listens. And I know that he's a massive. Um, I think he's brought. He's a massive um, like idol for the locks these days. You know, locks that like ball play and things like that. I think a lot of the younger locks um, now look up to Yoey, like playing on the biggest stage, middles that can ball play um, is is a massive thing. So I think they look at um, Yoey in that sense as well. So he's definitely a leader. Yeah. James Tedesco, captain of the Origin yeah. team, what comes to mind? Yeah, like also the same thing, like professionalism, always, always there and always fit. Like he's no matter how tired I see him, I see him play Origin. No matter how tired he is, he won't, he won't miss a beat. And I think that's what I learned about um, Teddy and the way he plays and the way he wants others to play is like, don't miss the moment. Like you don't want to look back at that moment. Um, at the end of the game, and you said like, and you're thinking to yourself, "Oh, I should have kept moving. I should have, I should have been there for the boys." Um, but he's that's the type of message that he gets along like across to the boys on the field. Like, don't miss a moment. If it's your turn to do something, you do it. It's your, if it's your job, you have to do it. If you miss your job, it's just hurting um, the whole team. So that's that's a massive um, le lesson that I've learned from Teddy through Origin. Excellent. Best lesson you've ever learned from a coaching staff member. Best lesson. That you could share. Oh, I probably wouldn't. Do you have a lesson? Do you have a memory of me? Yeah, of I think a, of a lesson. Oh, probably not like a lesson, but um, I think everything that you've you've taught me as a as a center. Um, I always I always thought that center is like attacking, attacking and defending, and that's all. But I think the things that I do off the ball now, like. It's not on the highlight reels, but I definitely know that it helps our back three. I definitely know that um, what you've taught us that that preseason of working off the ball when the ball moves, like your job's not done. You don't just stand there. Um, you've got a job to do to get back behind the ball and give an opportunity for another player to get through. Um, yeah, that's like the biggest lesson I've learned. And I think um, you being gone, I try and I don't I don't try and lose that. Like I try and like. I try to keep that in my game. I, I think it's a massive part of my game that um, I need to keep doing. So That's good to hear. Yeah. That's so it works. It's, it's, not, it's not broken. Don't change it, <laughs> eh? No, mate, honestly, like, I don't even know if I'll put that in. I don't like talking, asking a question to yeah. talk myself. Um, yeah. But 
but I do like that. I still love watching and I yeah. love watching detail that I mm. know how you practice. I know what you value. I love seeing your progress, mate. I love it, mate. I just, you've got big things ahead. You got changes coming your way, um, but you've still got business to take care of this year. So yeah, of course. thanks so much for your time and. Uh, you are welcome on this podcast anytime nah, because you just you just deliver so much inspiration to a lot of people, mate. And you're only 22. Holy, thank you, my man. Nah, thanks, H. My man. Thank you. Let's go.